Well, good evening and welcome to tonight's webinar. Uh, tonight's webinar is on CompTIA's Network Plus exam in 10-005, and we will be covering objective 1.8. By the way, this is for PACIT, which is a program through Edmonds Community College. So tonight's topic is network troubleshooting methodology. And it's really important when you're dealing with troubleshooting, particularly with networks, that you use a methodology. Now CompTIA does have a specific methodology that they like, but I will tell you that you know you can you can take their methodology and make it work for you, but I do highly recommend having a methodology because if you don't, you'll spend a lot of time banging your head against the wall. You'll be wasting a lot of time and creating headaches for yourself. So I do highly recommend using a methodology, developing it, and sticking to it. And tonight we're going to discuss CompTIA's troubleshooting methodology. Now CompTIA seven steps in their network troubleshooting methodology, which is a little bit different than their uh, troubleshooting methodology that you probably remember from the A+. Uh, they took one of their steps from A+, and split it into two to give us a total of seven. And the first step is to identify the problem. Now the problem is not the symptom. The symptom is um, what the user and user will report to you, but it's up to you to identify what the real problem is. Then you need to establish a theory of probable cause. Uh, go through and try and figure out the most likely causes, the, the cause with the highest probability of having created the symptoms. Once you do that, you need to test your theory to determine if it's the actual cause. And if it is, then you need to establish an action plan on how you're going to solve it. And then you need to implement that action plan, or you need to escalate the problem up the tech chain to somebody who can. If you implement an action, an, app, uh, an action plan. Step six is to verify full system functionality. And if the system is fully functional, then you move on to the final step, and that is document your findings. And I do recommend, no matter what you do, that your last step always be document your findings, whether it's troubleshooting, whether it's configuring, uh, so on and so forth, documents can save you a lot of time, especially in cases of troubleshooting where a lot of problems tend to be reoccurring. So let's talk a little bit more about identifying the problem. So the first thing, you, your first task is to be involved in information gathering. Talk to the end user, talk to the person who reported the problem. This will help you find out what the real problem is. A lot of the times you'll have an end user uh, contact you because you're tech support and you're the rock star of the, the tech support department. They'll contact you and they'll say the network's down. You'll log on to your, your terminal and you'll go, hmm, network's not really down. I wonder what their problem is. Then, you, then what you'll find out is maybe their symptom is they can't get to a certain area that they've been used to. Now you've got it narrowed down a little bit farther. That's identifying the symptoms. Maybe the symptom is that their connection is intermittent. That's also beneficial to know. But you won't know this stuff if you don't take time to gather the information. It's really hard to identify the true symptoms. When you're questioning the user, there are certain things that you can do. Um, 
if you're dealing with a an end user who is not very technical, you may need to ask open-ended questions. Um, and you need to be careful how you ask the questions. One of the questions that needs to be asked, and you need to do, to do it in a way to not put that end user on the defensive, is you need to find out what has changed, if anything has changed. Uh, I have actually seen tech support people go, so what, what did you change? And that puts the end user on the defensive, and then it gets really hard to get information out of them. So be be careful how you ask that question. Um, when you're determining if anything has changed, you need to, to kind of review things with the user. You can review maintenance logs, and you can review systems logs to, de to see if anything has changed. So now that you identified what the real problem, because you now know what the real symptoms are, then you need to figure out your theory of probable cause. List all of the probable causes and then kind of prioritize them uh, as in least likely, likely, most likely. Then what you do is you take the most likely cause, probable cause, and that's going to be the one that you're going to work with. Uh, one of the things that when you're dealing probable cause, like I put down here, is you need to to need to remember, don't forget to question the obvious. You know, if Joe can't print to the network printer, uh, you might want to ask him if he's made sure that the network printer is plugged in and turned on. A lot of the times he'll be silenced and they'll go, oh, hold on a moment. And then your problem solved. It doesn't always happen, but you need, you need to question the obvious. Okay, once you have determined your theory of probable causes, good evening, Craig. Welcome for joining us. Uh, once you've determined your theory for probable causes, then you need to test your theory. As a general rule, uh, each problem is going to have, and probable cause is going to have a different way of testing it. If it's a user who can't connect to a remote server, then your test might be to do, might be to use uh, tracer and ping uh, to determine whether or not you can reach that remote server. That's how you would test that theory if you thought that it maybe there was a link down somewhere. If you can't come up with a theory on how to determine if your probable cause is correct or not, then you need to move it up the chain, escalate it. Don't leave the end user um, with the inability to get work done. So once you come up with a theory and it works and you've now determined the probable cause, that's great. But what do you do if it doesn't work? What do you do if your theory fails? Well, then you go back to your probable cause scenario, and you pick a different probable cause, and then you build a new theory on how to test it or how to test your theory, and you go through until you can actually determine the cause, the probable cause, because you've tested it. Once you've tested it, and you've established that that is the real problem, well, then you do an action plan. Uh, sometimes simple problems may require a simple plan. You know, your action plan may be, well, somebody tripped over the, the Ethernet cable and pulled it out of the back of the back of the PC, so I'm going to plug it back in. That's a simple one. Uh, sometimes the problems are a little bit more complex. Uh, the Cisco 1812 router went down. I need to get another one out of stock. I need to configure, uh, create the configuration file, load it, and reinstall it. So you need that kind of action plan. You need to document it down. If you fail to plan, that means you're planning to fail. Uh, 
just about every action when you're dealing with a network, you should have a plan. And once you go to once you go to start your plan, uh, before you begin, you may need to make sure that everything that is required to fulfill your plan is on hand. And what do I mean by that? Well, if you have, let's say you have a Cisco 20, 2900 series switch that is becoming, is starting to have intermittent issues. It's not all the way down yet. Um, you decide that it's time to, to swap it out. So you build the action plan, you make all the steps down, and then you go and you, you pull the 2900 series switch that's having the issues, and then you remember that, gee, I don't have the replacement on hand. Now everybody's down, and they're down permanently until you get the switch in place instead of just having an intermittent issue. So always make sure you have everything on hand that it's going to take to fulfill your action plan. Uh, things do crop up, things that you weren't aware of, less likely to happen if you've written everything out, documented your steps, and checked them off as you go along. The other thing that you need to be aware of is, is your plan to solve this problem, is it going to have a potential effect on anybody else or on anything else? Every once in a while, changing one part of a network or one item in a configuration file to solve one issue can actually lead to other problems, uh, particularly if you're dealing with access control lists. For those of you who know that what those are, uh, you can change one little thing and the next thing you know, nobody can get anywhere. Uh, you might have solved one problem with somebody accessing a server they weren't supposed to, but now nobody can access that server. So keep in mind the potential effects of your action plan uh, to solve the problem. So once you have the plan, well, then you implement the plan. I'm pretty sure that all of you will develop the skills necessary to administer networks. And that'll be great. If you have the skill set to solve the issue, then solve it. If you don't have the skill set necessary to do it, guess what? Kick it up the chain to somebody who can. Uh, you're much better off kicking it up to a uh, different tech who's got the kill skills, skill set, than trying to struggle through it. Everybody will be happier in the end, and you may actually learn stuff that you didn't know before, especially if that tech allows you the opportunity to watch them uh, solve the issue. So you've identified the problem. You've established a theory of probable cause, you've tested the theory to determine the actual cause, you made your action plan, you implemented the solution, now you need to verify full system functionality. This kind of goes back to that earlier statement about uh, being aware of potential effects. Uh, if you change anything in a network, then you really should test just about everything you possibly can to make sure that everything functions as it's supposed to. I actually, one point in time, put in an, an ACL rule, uh, access control list rule, to keep my people from playing on the internet during business hours. Uh, I didn't configure it quite right. I mean, it, it worked. They couldn't get onto the internet during, during business hours. Sorry, my that's a loud phone. Um, but the problem was, since I didn't configure it right, uh, they actually couldn't get their jobs done either. I, I actually blocked them from from certain parts of the network that they needed to go to during business hours. They could do their jobs outside of business hours, 
but I didn't do me a whole lot of good at that point in time. Um, I actually had to go back in and remove the access list rule and then reconfigure it at a later time and reinstall it. Um, so as this step states, if the system is fully functional, awesome. Uh, put in or write down or document any preventative measures that you might have developed to prevent that problem from occurring again. If you haven't achieved full system functionality, then guess what? Go back and recycle through the process until you do. So now once once you've got that full system functionality and you've got it hammered down and that network's humming along just right, the last thing you do is you document your findings. And the way you do it is you start with what the initial complaint, complaint was and you go and you document everything until you get to the resolution and you document the resolution. Um, one of the things is that I'll say is if you actually have a methodology, it helps you to keep track of all your actions so that you can document them and so that you can document your steps. And another thing that I need to state, and this one's kind of important, is you need to document the outcomes, both the positive, the yays, and you need to document the negatives, the boos. And the reason for that is if you don't document the negative outcomes, chances are that somewhere along the lines, somebody's going to come along and try and solve that same problem as you did, and you want to help them to avoid those negative outcomes whenever possible. And if you document it, you can train it. And if you can train it, people generally remember it. So now we've now gone through all seven steps of the Network Plus troubleshooting methodology. There's identify the problem, establish a theory of probable cause, test the theory to determine actual cause, establish an action plan, implement the action plan or escalate it to somebody who can, verify full system functionality, and then completely document your findings. So that concludes this webinar on CompTIA's Network Plus Exam N10-005, Exam Objective 1.8.